last time on the Lazy Geckos. Check out the bed now. Okay. Ooh. Lay down and relax. Working on the boat. Hi, Daddy. It's leaking. What? Just as bad? Yeah, I mean, maybe worse. There's a leak when we turn the engine on. I disassembled it a little bit and I slid it forward an eighth of an inch and turned it 30 degrees. It's reseating itself and we should be fine. We're in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, Why man. should we explore it and have a little fun? Let's check it out. All this that you see with, with the orange vest. Yeah. They got a taxi. <laughs> Meg just got popped on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> just came to the 27 waterfalls. <laughs> and then dad went and lost our GoPro. It's so windy. This is why we're stuck here. Do you trust it? I have now stopped. I'm holding on for your life. They just came up and like completely washed our car down. There you go. Thank you. Hi. They wanted more. They, they wanted more it. money. I miss the game. Farewell, Megan. We love you. Our weather window is opening. We've been in the DR for a few weeks, pinned down by strong trade winds. It was great to get some work done on the boat, and now it was time to plan for the Mona Passage. This is a notoriously dangerous passage between here and Puerto Rico. It needs to be done right. Is this how you have your morning coffee? <laughs> Maybe. You gotta get the perfect angle. I have a great idea. Yeah. Before we take off tonight, we should get pizzas to go. Heck yeah. Because I'm usually having to cook or like slow cook something along the way and we can just grab some pizzas. We've never done that. Do we get Papa John's? No. <laughs> All we have is Dominican pizza, which isn't that bad. No, that's good. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Yeah, snack on it all night. Pizza all night long. What are you doing? Just organizing the wires and stuff. Is it a mess? Uh, it was kind of messy, but I have an Xbox, the DVD player. I have to use splitters to get them to different TVs. Behind there is like a RCA and TV antenna that we haven't ever used. I'm just gonna leave it back there. I put this here. This is our Apple TV that we don't use. Came with the boat. But this little block here separates, you know, like the view. You can put stuff in here like that. But behind it is like our amp and stuff like that. But basically, I'm gonna just remove it so I can put some storage back in here. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get a little bit more organized. Are you ready to get on out of here? I'm more than ready. Trade winds. I know, man. They blow, they blow. And after a while, you get sick of it. That's for sure, but it's all good. I'm happy to be leaving. I don't really like the passage we're about to go on, but you know, I'm sure to be fine. We should have a good weather window. We've uh, talked to Chris Parker several times. He thinks this is a good weather window, so we agree, so we're gonna go with it. Well, I felt good until you just said that. Well, I mean, I always feel a little nervous for a passage, but any passage, you know? We could always turn around. Yep, it'll be fine. So we're planning on a, about five knots with a current and when a, you know waves right at us. So we'll leave here before sunset because the winds die at night. Uh, we want to get out of the harbor um, before the, the sun goes down so that we can get out safely. Then the sun should go down, the wind should die, and then we will motor into the wind all night long along the coast of the Dominican Republic. With pizza. With pizza on board. <laughs> I'm just so excited I don't have to cook. That's great. <laughs> I was gonna slow cook like a beef and cheese thing and I was dreading that because I'm always cooking, so. That's awesome, pizza for lunch, dinner, and breakfast. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Do you want pizza? Yeah. What kind? Oh, I want, um, I don't want spicy. All right, no spicy, so no pepperonis. 
Uh, I think he means jalapenos. So we got jalapenos at one time. Oh yeah, on each one. It didn't go good. It, I picked them off, but the juice was still on there. This is our offshore uh, predict wind. We use this to download all of our forecasts and everything for uh, winds, waves, all that type of stuff. We can download this through Iridium Go. But this is the forecast starting tonight at around sunset or so. Um, you can see the winds out here, 20 knots, 10 knots. We're gonna be, we're right in here and we're gonna be hugging this coast. So this is going through the night. You can see the winds diminish. It goes down to five knots, a little bit strong here. We'll have to push through. And then we're gonna be motoring up down into this little ravine where it looks like it's about five knots. This is the Mona Passage, Mona Island here. And here on the sixth, looks like we might have another weather window opening up. There's a whole book about this, but several, but uh, a lot of storms come across here. The, there's a there's a big huge shoal here. It's very deep, but it causes all kinds of waves and stuff because how deep it is everywhere else. Um, like the horseshoe shoal, I call it the ball sack shoal. It almost looks like a ball sack, but what you can do is you can go around the island here, Dominican, and then come down to Mona and cross, or you can come across here and the 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 shoals are all in here. You come across and kind of go up, and then you want to tack north and then tack back down because a bunch of storms form off Puerto Rico. So this is a pretty sketchy passage. You got to make sure you hit it at the right time. I've heard horror stories, and I've heard that hey, it was beautiful because we waited for the right time. So that's what we plan on doing, waiting. I'm fine with that. It's about midnight. We're setting sail with five other boats for the Mona Passage. Here we go. I met a man named Melchizedek. He was a good man, a good man. Wandering lonely in the desert, he invited me to stay. Said I would learn to love the space. While a couple boats decided to divert for Samana, three of us continued on for Puerto Rico. Her heart was broken, seen from miles wide, miles wide, like the moon over the world. Something that kept me busy on this passage was I saw some humpback whales earlier. So beautiful, big and pretty. That was special for sure. We're on the third leg of our Mona Passage. It's been nice so far. Nice calm seas. Well, yeah, they're pretty calm. They got a little rocky last night. The wind is between 8 and 12, so we're on a beam reach at 90 degrees. And we're heading into Puerto Rico, which is really cool. I thought on the first leg that the window was going to close. It kind of looked like that, but we went ahead and got in touch with Chris Parker and he gave us the go ahead and we went with it. And he's spot on. He's good. It's impressive. Very impressive. So I'm happy that um, we did 
we were in a group with five boats total, including us, and uh, two of them decided to make the turn into Samanoff, and the three catamarans decided to continue on on the passage. It's been great. Our first real experience buddy boating, um, and I've really enjoyed it. Having somebody to talk to, bounce ideas off of, get opinions. If anybody runs into you know trouble, you're there to help. So it's been really nice. It's a great experience. This is definitely one of the passages that I've worried most about after reading Van Sand's book. He uses some pretty crazy descriptive words that are kind of make you be like, I don't know. But he has some great information to pass along and everybody kind of goes off that. We read the book, both of us. Well, I skimmed, Jeremiah really read, and uh, bounced off Chris Parker. And here we are, Puerto Rico. We have just under 20 miles to go. We're making almost seven knots. We are full sails up and motoring, just because the weather window is supposed to close this afternoon, so we kind of want to get across this long stretch as quickly as we can. And we have a spot at a marina to pull in. We're going to get our mail and then continue on down the south side of Puerto Rico. So I'm excited. I've heard that it's very beautiful. passage across the board and there's a huge storm at our port. The system will figure out which way it's going and how fast it's going and then it will tell you if you're going to intersect and it will help you avoid things like these squalls. Another one just popped up. I'll acquire it. That's my 22nd of the passage. Acquiring. I'll acquire boats that don't have AIS, anything like that. And, uh, and then it takes a couple seconds and tracks it, and then it'll say, hey, it's okay, it's going northwest at 22 knots. Which these storms, these squalls are moving at about 22 to 25 knots. So far there's been three of them, two have fizzled out. That one is moving north, and we're going southeast. So that's good, it's going 21.5 knots north. So we'll pass it. None of them have been right on our marina though. They're all north, so that's good. So let them stay over there with this scooch around it. We'll outflank it. It's been a good passage. I'm not gonna jinx it. So far everything's been fine. And uh, we'd love to get there before sunset, which was the plan. You know, everybody has their own method of doing like the Mono Passage. You know, you got Chris Parker, you got the Van Sant book. Um, everybody seems to have their own idea and know what they're talking about, but everybody's opinions are different. Some of them fit together, whatever. We had some five boats. Some people were going the Van Sant thing. We were relying on the Chris Parker idea with Riddick Wynn um, and so on. And when it came down to it, the Chris Parker one was exactly right, 100%. I mean, across the board. And even when we thought the weather window was closing because of Wendy, one of the boats was going with Wendy, Wendy said there would not be a weather window. I emailed Chris and said, hey, you know, can you confirm that the weather window is going to close? He said, no, it's, it's, it will still be good. Just hit all your marks at certain times. And it was exactly what he said it would be. So that's great. We oh, were really awesome. happy with Chris. Right? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. You want to walk me through what he told us to do? Well, we got a storm track now, but um, the main part was jumping off from Dominican around the Horseshoe Shoals. Chris was like, hey, get to the, go past the shoals at dawn, and then tax north or southeast, and uh, head straight for this place. So instead of tacking north and coming back down like some people will do to avoid the squalls, 
we went ahead and just went because there weren't those speeding squalls. We didn't hit any until we got very at the very end. So it's been great, man. See, here's the storm here. And I have a couple different parts of it acquired so that I can see which way it's kind of going. And this one is actually headed right here. Here we are. And saying we will intersect. But moving at what, 10, what was it, 10 knots? Moving at 10 knots, we'll see these. I've seen four of these now pop up and they fizzle. So if it is moving there, then what I would do is if it was really coming down here, I would just stop, turn around, and go back up until it passes and come back down. We're going here. So our path is here and to here. We made it, honey. Well, it, don't, well, no. don't jinx us down. I'm not, I'm just saying. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh my god. I didn't think, uh. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I didn't think it would go so smoothly and it was like amazing. The yeah. passage was absolutely amazing. I'm happy that we like educated ourselves, listened to other people, asked around, got Chris Parker to help us out. I've read a lot of horror stories and ours is not a horror story. It was like smooth sailing. I could do that passage again if I knew it was going to be like that. Coming up on the Lazy Geckos. I was peeing, you just missed it. I think we'll go in town today. We got some dolphins coming. Yeah, there you are, look. Coming into Cabo Rojo. All right, Mom, you got to answer the radio for the Coast Guard. I will. Watch that dinghy. They're from Australia and we're in Puerto Rico and they don't have the correct visa. I oversighted our visa with uh, an exemption called an ESTA visa. And uh, we needed a B1 or a B2. We're at Phosphorescent Bay. We're gonna go see the bioluminant. You only live once. Let's get going. It's a double rainbow. Look at that. The water warms up from the engine while we're going. Is she done? Moment There's here. liquor in that coffee. This is where the Wanderer was, the boat from Captain Ron. Generator's having a little bit of a glitch. Do you guys believe in ghosts? I'm not kidding. It's a couple seconds later, Brittany's arm turns to like fire, right? Like, she's like, what the? And then right after that, a brick flies off the building, a full brick, and lands, he steps forward, and it lands directly behind him. Episodes are fueled by Patreon. See how you can be a part of our journey at patreon.com forward slash lazy geckos. Want to get behind the scenes? Follow us on Instagram. There's tons more fun to see on our Vimeo channel. You can find the link in the description below. We've been working all hurricane season for this. Are you ready to take this adventure to another level? We are. Oh. How is it? It's good. It tastes good when you're working for it. We've added a huge feature for you to enjoy. <laughs> our private server is live, baby. Visit us at www.lazygeckos.net to access episodes, exclusive content, bonus footage, live streams, photo shoots, and more. We are also in the process of building free apps for your tablet and phone. You can also qualify for free access by becoming a patron. See details at patreon.com forward slash lazygeckos.